How's it going today, guys? Welcome back to my series on investing in the stock market for beginners. I thank you for joining me once again. And in this section, we're gonna talk about how to make money and making money as an investor. I'm sure most people who invest in the stock market are doing so because they are looking to make money. Most people are not just buying stocks just because they want to tell people, oh, I am buying stocks just for fun. You're buying stocks and you're investing in companies because you're looking to make money. And in this section, we're going to talk about how you actually make money as a stock market investor. So the first thing I want to do is cover a very common mistake that I see when it comes to investing in the stock market for the first time. And this is the fact that people are under the misconception that money is made by buying and selling stocks. Now, while this is the case, it's all about when you buy them and when you sell them. When I am hearing people talking about buying and selling stocks, I am under the impression they are talking about frequency, as in frequently buying and selling stocks and being very active with their investments. This right here is a strategy of trading, not investing. And this is a strategy where you are actively buying and selling stocks frequently. And this strategy does not work for most people. The only people who get rich from active trading is the brokers themselves because they make money on the transaction costs every time you buy and sell a stock. Now, I do know that a lot of people are going to stop me here and say, what about Robinhood? I don't pay any commission costs with Robinhood when I buy or sell a stock. Do understand that Robinhood is only for people in the United States and pretty much everyone else outside of the US has to pay some kind of transaction cost or commission cost when they are buying and selling a stock. And if you are someone who is looking to get into day trading, you're looking to trade and be very active with your investments each week, first of all, I don't do that myself and I don't recommend it. But if you are looking into doing that and you want to try to do this with Robinhood, I would highly recommend you educate yourself on the FINRA pattern day trading rules just to make sure you are not violating any of those rules and getting any kind of suspension on your account. If you do violate these pattern day trading rules, you can get a 90 day suspension on your Robinhood account. But again, I am not a trader. I'm an investor, so I'm not going to go into any detail about these pattern day trading rules. So if I'm not actively buying and selling stocks on a regular basis and trading stocks, how am I actually making money when it comes to investing in the stock market? It is because I am an investor. I'm an investor, not a trader. And Warren Buffett is also an investor and not a trader. So what is the difference between Warren Buffett and somebody who is an active trader who is trading in and out of stocks on a regular basis and in some cases trading in and out of stocks on a day-to-day -day basis? The difference is the flurry of activity within that trading account and the frequent buying and selling. You do not hear about Warren Buffett buying a stock on a Monday and selling it on a Wednesday. When he buys a stock, he is a long-term investor. And later on in this section, we're gonna go over some of Warren Buffett's longest investments to give you an example of this. Trading is a form of speculation as the price movements in the short term are very volatile and they are not predictable. So if you guys have not looked this up, the difference between an investment versus a speculation, I've done a video about this on my channel, but the best way to learn about this is by reading the book, The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. You might be able to find some excerpts from that book online, but make sure you educate yourself on the difference between a speculation and an investment. Day traders and short term traders are speculators, while people who buy stocks and hold them over long periods of time, like Warren Buffett and myself, are investors. And there is a big difference between these two things. But unfortunately, in most cases, the lines are blurred between investment versus speculation. Now understand as well that these successful day traders and swing traders are not doing this on a platform like Robinhood. They are using very sophisticated trading platforms they have multiple monitors with their computers and they are tracking dozens of different charts on a daily basis. I would highly recommend avoiding day trading on Robinhood if you're serious about it. Spend a lot of time learning about these strategies and at least use the right tools because if you're trying to day trade using a simple price chart from Robinhood, I wish you luck with that but I don't have high hopes for your success with being a day trader on Robinhood. Trying to be successful with day trading without having the right tools for the job would be like trying to be in a NASCAR race driving your mom's Toyota Camry. It's just not going to work out for you. The best way for me to explain how money is made in the stock market is by sharing a quote from Benjamin Graham. He says that the real money in investing will have to be made as most of it has been in the past. Not out of buying and selling, but out of buying and holding securities. Receiving interest and dividends and benefiting from their long-term increase in value. Most successful investors out there are making money by buying and holding stocks for a long period of time. And I'm gonna give you guys an example of that now. 
So I'm going to share with you guys the story of a man named Ronald Reed. He was a janitor who passed away, and upon his death, he left behind a portfolio worth $8 million. So Ronald Reed was a janitor at a JCPenney store, and he started slowly accumulating shares of stocks in 1959. The thing we have to mention here about Ronald Reed is he was very similar to most successful investors out there in that he bought and never sold anything. So do you think we saw a man like Ronald Reed day trading and worrying about the short term price movements of stocks? Absolutely not. He understood that the real money was to be made from the long term appreciation of value. Now I'm not telling you guys that you should put all of your money away and leave behind $8 million. That is not why I'm investing. I invest for my future that way when I get to a certain point in life I don't ever have to worry about money again. I would never leave a portfolio of $8 million behind. I would want to use that money when I wanted that money when I was older. So I'm not telling you guys that you should do what Ronald Reed did. I just want to use him as an example of what long-term investing does for you. So Ronald Reed accumulated shares of companies operating a business he understood as long as they paid dividends. That was his only criteria. Ronald Reed followed basic rules of diversification and understood the danger of activity. He understood that trading activity is just going to take money out of your account and move it into the hands of your broker. And the best strategy is to just accumulate shares over time and rarely sell anything. And if you're Ronald Reed, you never sell anything. That is basically what I do. I accumulate shares of companies that I understand and I want to get behind and I rarely sell anything. So Ronald Reed was a man who never made more than $12 an hour in his entire life and he accumulated a net worth of $8 million by slowly accumulating shares of good companies over time and not worrying about the market moves in the short term. So now let's talk about Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors of our time, if not the most successful. So what's interesting about Warren Buffett is that the man himself lives in a house worth $650,000. As of 2018, Warren Buffett has a net worth of $86.1 billion and he lives in a house worth less than $1 million. That just goes to show you how humble Warren Buffett is and how much he understands the fact that you don't want to be spending all of your money today. Now, uh, if I was Warren Buffett, I probably would live in a nicer house. I'm going to be honest with you guys, but it's just a great example of the type of mindset that Warren Buffett has. So just as an example of how long-term Warren Buffett is when it comes to investing, here are a few of his largest investments and when he started buying them. So Warren Buffett started buying American Express back in the 1960s. He started buying shares of Coca-Cola stock in 1988 and started buying shares of Procter & Gamble in 1989. So Warren Buffett and Ronald Reed are very similar in their approach of accumulating shares over time and never selling them. Now, Warren Buffett does occasionally sell his position and buy something else, but he is a very long-term investor. And when he buys into a stock, he has the intention of holding on to that stock for many decades. So Warren Buffett and Ronald Reed are long-term value investors looking to invest in businesses they understand that pay dividends. Now, I'm not saying this is exactly the strategy that you guys need to follow, but again, remember that this series is geared towards beginners, and I always want beginners to start with the most conservative approach possible and then eventually branch out into different categories. Myself, I have taken on riskier investments. I have invested in some tech growth stocks, and I will continue to do so. I will be investing in growth stocks, and really what we're looking at here is a strategy of being an income investor where you're looking to get dividends from these stocks over time, and you're not looking to capitalize on any kind of incredible growth with these companies because these older, durable, time-tested companies have been around for a very long time, so you're not going to see any kind of stellar growth with a company like American Express, Coca-Cola, or Procter & Gamble. But I just want to start by pointing you guys in the right direction of the strategy that has made Warren Buffett as rich as he is today. And over time, as you learn more, you may decide to branch out into different types of investments like growth investments. And I think as a young person, that is a wise decision, but I just want you to start with the simplest and easiest way to understand investing. So how do long-term investors actually make money by investing? investing in the stock market. It is through two avenues and those are asset appreciation and dividends. So first of all, let's look at asset appreciation. Over time, the share price of a stock will increase if this is a good investment. And Warren Buffett has always invested in good, simple to understand businesses. So he has always had success with this. 
essentially what's going to happen is increased profits and business expansion will result in asset appreciation as that share price or ownership stake becomes more valuable. And another thing that may happen as well is if the company is conducting share buybacks and buying shares back off the market, this will reduce the outstanding shares of that stock, increasing your ownership stake in that business, which is going to increase the value of those shares as there are less of them available to the public. On the other hand, you can make money from dividends, and dividends are those quarterly cash payments that are paid out to shareholders, and this is from an income investment. Now, we're going to have a whole section in this series talking about dividends, so if you don't have a good understanding of those right now, don't worry just yet. But these dividend payments can be cashed or reinvested back into the issuing stock, and reinvestment of dividends allows you to earn compound interest. And the last thing we're going to do is go over an example of what just dividends alone can do for you without even talking about asset appreciation so what we are looking at here is a very simple example we're using a compound interest calculator this is off a government website you can just search compound interest calculator and try this out yourself but we're looking at a $1,000 initial investment with a $250 a month contribution over 45 years now again we are not factoring in any asset appreciation all we are looking at is what could happen when you allow your dividends to earn compound interest. And the way this works is every time you earn a dividend, you're buying more of that stock. And as a result, your dividends will earn dividends. And that is the basic definition of compound interest, where your money is going to grow into more money through compounding. This is why Albert Einstein called this the eighth wonder of the world. And here is an example of this. So on the right, you can see that this small investment of $1,000 and 250 a month without any asset appreciation, if this was a stock worth $10 a share, we're assuming that in 45 years, it's still worth just $10 a share. So without any asset appreciation, this investment would grow to $281,941.18. And on the bottom there in the blue, you can see what this would have grown to without compound interest. And the red part shows what compound interest allows this investment to do. So this is why people reinvest their dividends and earn compound interest. And this is an excellent way to become very rich when it comes to investing in the stock market. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this section on how you make money by investing. Again, there are other ways people do this. Like I said myself, I often invest in growth stocks. These are companies that do not pay dividends, but you're looking for more asset appreciation from this stock. But the basic principle still applies. You're looking to make money by that actual stock or ownership stake increasing in value due to expansion of operations or increased company earnings. And some people may decide to be an income investor where they're also looking to earn dividends and allow those dividends to earn more dividends in the future. Thank you guys for watching this section and I will see you in the next video. If you are interested in learning more about investing in the stock market, I've created a free course just for you. The link is in the description below. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy as well.